Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast series. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, and joining me as usual is Tifa Snow. Tifa, our question today, I hope I can get all of this out, is how can I help a person living with dementia find joy in life when they can't remember family members and even who they are? And while I was putting the program together for today, I realized that maybe did we ever sort of go over the four truths? Because that might sort of set the... Mm -hmm the yeah uh, yeah the, the, set the bar for the topic today yeah so what what i what it sounds like to me is somebody is really struggling themselves with um how does somebody who has all this happening they don't even know their family members they don't know who they are how could they possibly find joy in being alive and the answer we have is let's start with what is dementia well it means at least two parts of your brain are actively dying they're not just sick, they're dying. And as the disease spreads, more and more of your brain is gonna die. But what you have is the part that's left until it dies. And even at the end of this disease, you'll still have one third of your brain left. It's just not enough to run everything. Um, the second thing that's true about all dementia is that they all progress. They're all gonna progress. There is currently no way to stop a dementia once it gets started. Um, there's no way to turn it around and make it better. There's no way to stop it in its track and just hold it still. I mean, we don't have any of that. Um, we maybe can do some risk reduction, but we don't have a way to stop this once it gets started. And as people progress, they're going to change and their abilities change. Uh, and they're still alive and they're still living and there's still potential. Um, now, the third thing that's true is, oh, well, um, I said that, which is we can't fix it. So it was two parts are dying, it's progressive, and we can't fix it. So if I can't fix it, what I have is what I have. The fourth part that is going to be true is that ultimately it will result in your death because when so much of your brain dies, you can't keep going, you die. I mean, but that's pretty much how life works. I mean, you can die quickly, you can die slowly, but we're all going to die. I mean, that's... Well, gee whiz, we've gotten really cheery here, haven't we? So well, now... you know, so, okay, so we're all going to die, so get over it. <laughs> so the answer becomes, well, we're all going to do that part. How about how do we live until we die? Okay, so, so it, was the, it was you. about the joy, wasn't it? It was about yeah. the joy. So I have a yeah. question for you. Do you think babies know who they are? No. Do you think babies know who their mothers are? Yes. How? I, I, there's a bond that suddenly forms with, you know, mom and baby. Through what? Through what? Uh, touch, oh, sight, touch, smell. Sight, yeah. Smell. Taste. Yeah. Yeah. Taste. Yeah. So, huh. So it's a sensory experience. Hmm. So we can really find, babies can show you joy. I mean, do you think babies are happy sometimes? Oh, yeah. The goo-goos are just the sweetest sound you hear in the world. And they show you they're happy and they can signal that they're having a good time. Um, sometimes what makes them happy? What have you noticed small children or baby? Let's go to small children even. What makes small children happy? Singing, sometimes. tickling. Singing, tickling, laughing. Um, Peekaboo. Yeah, peek just playing I mean, around. Yeah. Stupid repeated game. <laughs> I mean, saying the same thing over and over again. Um, doing the same motion. Um, sometimes going fast, sometimes going slow. Rocking. Um, so what we want to figure out is what still brings the person pleasure, uh, either a sensory pleasure or a, maybe an emotional pleasure, maybe doing those things. It's not about our previous relationship. It's about, do I like being with you now? Is what you're doing now something I can enjoy? And can I find pleasure in your pleasure, even though you don't know who I am, even though you're not even sure who you are, can you still find pleasure in examining a flower, taking apart a phone book, I mean, tearing pages out of a phone book, ripping up a, a Kleenex. If you find pleasure in it, can I find pleasure in your pleasure or am I grieving that you can't be the way you used to? And this, oh my gosh, I can't believe my mother with a PhD is doing that. And it's like, well, okay, well, this woman, this lovely woman seems to be having a wonderful time with this Kleenex. And maybe what we need is a little more space and distance and less time. Um, so you can find that, well, I mean, she seems to be having a good time. 
So if, if the person living with dementia is not able to communicate, mm -hmm. if they're, they're simply sitting and, and not really engaging, does that mean they don't want you there? Oh, absolutely not. Because one of the tricky parts about this thing is initiation versus participation. So we want to be thoughtful. And if someone is doing something and you, you look carefully before you intervene, you want to offer a connection and see whether or not the offer of pressure at the knee when you're kneeling down and you say the person's name like, oh, Greg, if you get the person to go, huh? yeah, and you see a movement or you notice a, uh, or a breathing change or maybe eyes open, hey, what I might be able to do is use my voice, use my cadence, use my touch. Facial expression. Not, facial expression to see whether or not they're interested in being with me. Um, and they may not. They may be busy doing what they're doing and we don't need to harass them, but we need to make offers because initiation is a huge issue for people who are living with these brain changes. So whose expectations do we have to temper here? <laughs> oh, look in the mirror. I mean, mm. our biggest challenge is being aware that we want what we can't have. We want our moms to be our moms and our husbands to be our husbands. We so miss them. And we're so sometimes without meaning to putting our expectations on them when in fact, they look pretty satisfied right here. I mean, they're sitting in the sun, they tip their head back. It's like maybe they're they're having a great time sitting in the sun. Give it a few more minutes and see if they're starting to sweat. Well, then you could go, hmm, are starting to look a little red. That's when I might want to go, oh, my friend, I believe you are cooking in the sun. Let's tell you what. Yeah, I'm going to move you just a little bit. And I might lay my hands over the shoulders on the chest wall as I'm starting to move the chair so I don't startle and surprise. But I do deliver, uh, I think we need to move in the shade here, but I don't need to cause harm. And I might just try the shade first to see what happens. And then I'll try a greater interaction. So is there a guideline on how to visit? Because it sounds like that might help this particular person or persons who are, are struggling with this whole concept. Yeah, and, and we do have some guides for, you know, what do you do to make a visit go well as people are changing, as their brains are, are modifying themselves, and as their ability to take in data, process data, and participate is changing, so that we don't have greater expectations than they can deliver. And we can come in with some props, some ways of being, some expectations, and some skills so that our interaction tends to be more effective. So we've got resources, we've got, we've got webinars, we've got demonstrations, we have, we even have mentors who could work with somebody for an hour if they're gonna do some visiting to let them practice their skills, to get a handle on who they're visiting and what their abilities are, and then to set them up for success. Um, because there's a big difference between bringing shiny beads from the dollar store and bringing the precious jewelry that was grandma's. Um, and then, you know, I want to keep it. <laughs> so family members have one advantage that care partners, care staff don't have. That is, they know the person. And that's a real advantage. That's a huge advantage if we're willing to admit that's who they were, and they may still be exactly how they were, but we've got to also be willing to hear that that's how they were, and this is how it now manifests itself. I used to love to change my clothes every day because I'd love to try something new on, and now you're looking and I'm putting the same thing back on, so you're going to have to change and just bring in the same thing for me because that's the only outfit I'll wear. And if you don't bring me in several copies of it, I just stay in the same outfit because I'm not wearing that other stuff because there's something about the feel of this, the, the, the color of it, whatever it is that my brain really likes now. And I'm sort of stuck. My question uh, as, is, can you be flexible? <laughs> as with every topic we start on, we could go on for hours and hours and hours. And, and so if people want more information on this, where can they, where can they dig that up? 
probably the best way to get this information is to try either our chat or our info line so that we can hook you up with the best resource compared to where you are and what you're trying to do and with whom you're trying to do it. It's probably worth a connection, either uh, email or a call on our 800, 800 sort of number. You know, it's not 800 anymore. It's eight something or other, 877, I think. Um, I, you know, I don't keep up with it. I, I don't have to call it. So, you know, it's that kind of thing, but we have it listed just about everywhere. Um, and I've got a feeling Greg will add it at the end here, <laughs> or Emilio will, because he's one of our resource people who does good stuff behind the scenes. So Tifa, we want thank, you to get in touch. <laughs> yeah. Tifa, thank you again. Well, I'm not sure how thankful to be, but thank you, Greg, for putting up with my uh, abilities and inabilities. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partner podcast series. For more information on today's topic or other information relating to dementia, go to tifasnow.com.